Hello, everybody. I'm Dorothy. Thanks for joining me here today. Uh, you can find me right here, nhastrology.com, and of course, right here, if you're on YouTube. Today, I'm going to talk about the week of November 9th. There's five different things that really stand out for this week. We're going to cover most of them today. Sorry I'm late. Not that you're sitting here waiting with bated breath for me to post, but the point is, is like, what I mean, just last week I, I couldn't get I couldn't get myself to do any of this stuff. The the aspects and the transits and the energy in the air was just so much that um, I'm pretty much an optimist. But there are times when I need a break too. So I did a lot of walking in the woods and in the forest. And uh, today I'm going to head out to the beach because for some reason it's November 9th and it's going to be 70 here in New Hampshire. So after today afternoon i'm heading out just for the afternoon i need this we this is my way of taking care of myself what what's your way of taking care of yourself we are in harsh energy um things have been are difficult there's a lot of uncomfortable stuff going on in the world these days as we're all aware and um it's good that we we really need to take care of ourselves and nurture ourselves so there's that now, the astrology of this week is a very, very heavy Scorpio signature. Not heavy that it's oppressive, but it can be. But just meaning that there's a lot of nods to the Scorpio energy. Mars is very active this week. We have Venus and Mars in an opposition today, November 9th. We're going to talk about that in just a sec. We also have Mercury entering Scorpio. Yeah, Mercury entering Scorpio, and that will be on the 10th. So that's on Tuesday. So that's Scorpio. Mars rules Scorpio, right? Mars is tradi traditional rule of Scorpio. Mars is stationary on Friday the 13th. I know every cliche 2020 is throwing at us this year. Um, and so Mars, again, even though he is in Aries, traditional rule of Scorpio, we have the new moon in Scorpio. Jupiter and Pluto are connecting. Pluto rules Scorpio. All kinds of, see, that's what I mean by heavy. Lots of Scorpio energy. So overall, that means as a collective, and even personally, I like to speak personally. I'm a Gemini. I want to bring it back to here right now. What can I do? Why does that matter for me in my life? Things like that. You're going to be different. We're all different. So when I see a heavy Scorpio signature, as I do this week, then it represents that we are in this stage of change and transformation. Now, I have a written forecast. It's a couple hundred, about I don't know, 1,500 words or so right on my website. And you could join up to get on my newsletter and I will email it to you. I usually send new newsletters out on Thursdays. But again, last week, didn't get to it. I got to it first thing this morning, <laughs> late last night, late Sunday night. And this morning is when I was doing my work. So it's the way it is some days. I want to... Um, what do I want to do? I want to open up my notes because I want, listen, this is all in the written forecast. If you take the word transformation, the Scorpio umbrella that we're going through right now, if you take the word transformation, you right click it in Microsoft Word, you're going to get a bunch of, and, and click on synonyms. You're going to get a lot of different words because transformation, I mean, that is a great keyword for Scorpio and that is what's going on, right? And the energy of transformation can be seen in many different ways. So transformation is transformation. But another way to look at it, a synonym is makeover. So what do you need to change? Revolution is in there too. And we're going to be, we do see, and there are a lot of people who are very, who are acting quite revolutionary and fighting and really uh, pushing the limits. A lot of people are feeling this these days. And we understand that. Change is another word for transformation. Conversion is another word for chance for transformation and renovation. There's plenty more, but use some of those renovation. What am I going to, what do I want to renovate in my life? So in a nutshell, that is what's going on. The change is beginning. All right. So it can be quite difficult for some and not so much for others if you're ready for it, but if you're not ready for it, it's going to be difficult for you, you know, but, and if it's difficult for you, we have, opportunities with the aspects that are going on throughout the week to process these things on a personal level. So what does that mean? First off, we have Venus in Libra today and Mars in Aries. And today they are in an, uh, in an exact opposition to each other. That happens just after 11 a.m. Eastern time zone. So what does that mean? Venus and Libra, they're both in their own ruling signs. Venus and Libra is very feminine. It is about finding that peace, that harmony, that balance. But typically, Things are out of balance 
So we, we're working on bringing them back into balance. Mars and Aries is, is the fighter, the warrior. He's stationary, again, retrograde still, and stationary till Friday the 13th. So there is a lot of, whenever we see Mars and Aries, there's a lot of fighting and a lot of war and a lot of anger. On a personal level, we're all going to feel this in some way. Everybody gets angry about something sometimes, somewhere, sometimes, somehow. This opposition of the feminine and the masculine, Venus and Mars, is, is here to help bring us together if we're choosing to do that, right? We have to choose to do it. We can fight and use that opposition at, you know, like we're fighting ourselves in the mirror, and that's perfectly fine if that's what you choose to do. You're probably not going to watch any further anyways. But if you're looking to work with these energies, this represents the feminine, right? Venus in, in Libra. If you're a female, if you represent as a female, then it's asking you to um, maybe incorporate a little more masculine energy, bring in your, you know, bring out your masculine side a little bit more and be more assertive and step up for yourself. And for those who identify as more male, then it may be asking you to soften the edges a little bit and bring in the feminine side. That's just one way to look at it. Just one way. So, and even if you're not in a partnership, partnerships are definitely you know, going to be sh going to be uh, shaken a little bit at this with this transit. But we're already feeling it because I got this up so late. But you know, we've been feeling it all last week, anyways. But just look at where that is in your life and what's going on in that regard. All right, where that Aries and Libra energy is. So I want you to think about that. I, can, I think I could probably share that screen with you. Let's see if I can find it. And um, just so you can get a quick peek, this, and again, this is for uh, my latitude and longitude, not yours, okay? Here it is. I'll do a new share every time there's a new window up. So here it is at 15 degrees, Libra and Aries, all right? Mars isn't really moving anywhere. He's, he's going to station. We'll, we'll talk about that next. So there, there's that piece that's going on. So look at that for yourself and decide, you know, what's happening there. The next... Make sure I made a new share. Yes, I did. Good. The next I want to talk about is Mercury. I think this is the one with Mercury. Yes, Mercury enters Scorpio. Mercury enters Scorpio here. Here it is. Just happens to be here for my latitude and longitude. It won't be in this house if you live in a different time zone than myself. Mercury and Scorpio. Mercury is the communicator, of course. He was in Scorpio retrograde for most of October. And so that means a lot of deep things would be stirring, not necessarily coming to the surface. Some deeper things would come to the surface, but not necessarily. So I'm talking personally, and some of these personal things get triggered by what's going on out in the world, especially today. So now that Mercury is in Scorpio and moving direct, he will stay in that sign here. Let me get that for you. I don't have that in my head. He will stay, now he will stay in that sign all the way until December 2nd, December 1st, December 2nd. He'll be in the sign of Scorpio. We have an opportunity here to process and release some of the deeper yucky things going on. Again, the overall energy of this week, there's a lot of specifics, but it's Scorpio. Mercury and Scorpio, Mars is, is act, activated by the opposition of Venus and its station. It's the traditional rule of Scorpio. I think I already said this. Pluto is, is rule Scorpio, so much Scorpio stuff. That means the things that are, you're being triggered by what's going on in the world. It's time for you to take that deep dive, do your meditation, see your therapist, do shamanic healing, shamanic working, really deep journaling, writing this stuff up. You, it's, it's important on a personal level for if you're triggered and upset by what's going on in the world around you, bringing that to the surface so it can heal. It is no different than, you know, whenever we have a, a blemish as it and you have to pop it just because that has to get out because it's too painful. Once it's expressed, then the healing begins. This is what we have. I know that's a yucky example, but it is the truth. That's what Scorpio is. Infection, pus, yucky things in this underneath, hidden things that we have oppressed within ourselves. And if you're triggered now, now's the time to work through it. And if you need more help than just figuring out how to handle this alone, please reach out. Please reach out to your therapist or people, somebody that you trust, because it's important that, that you do that. All right. Because there's a lot going on with this. So much going on with this. All right. Next, I want to talk about 
And there's more. And let me tell you, I have a Patreon group. It's um, it's a sponsored, you guys sponsor me. You, you come in at a few bucks a month and I do a bunch of live things today. I'm going to go in depth about this next aspect, which is on Thursday, the 12th. I'm going to talk about it a little bit here, but I'm going to go in depth. If you're part of my Patreon group, you would be able to join me live there today at noon. And I also, um, on Wednesday night, I will talk about to the Patreon group, uh, the new moon in Scorpio in depth, but I'm going to talk about that now too, but even more so there. So today, Thursday, not today. So on Thursday, November 12th, Jupiter conjuncts Pluto. Now this is the third and final conjunction between the two. April 4th, it's when we had our first so-called surge of the virus. June 30th was even more, right? And now we're in November 12th. And so we knew back when this began, we knew that when Jupiter and Pluto came together at this point in time, the virus was going to be taking quite a, a big climb. And it is. And it's expected. Pluto rules viruses. And Jupiter expands everything it's connected to. So that's one way that this is expressing itself and showing itself. But let's bring it back again to the more personal. Pluto is our power. It's in Capricorn. So the Pluto in Capricorn, it's been there since 2008. That's nothing new. But Pluto is our power and our strength and where we feel in control or where we may have given that control up. When Jupiter, this is a very positive way. I've been looking at it in a positive way from the beginning, since 2019. I want to use this in a positive way, and you can too. Jupiter expands what it connects to. So if you're driven and it's to accomplish something and to grow something, whether it's a business or a relationship or something, whatever it is that you know that is inside here and you've been trying to accomplish, you've been trying to grow something and get comfortable in your world and just really get out there, now's the time. We're feeling it all week. We've been feeling it for weeks and weeks. I mean, just because these are the exact dates does not mean we are not in, in this. We're thick in it. So when Jupiter and Pluto come together, it, it is a very, it's a, quite a motivating dynamic and quite a motivating um, energy. Let me put that chart up. I forgot I had the charts here. Here it is. <clears throat> Make sure I'm still sharing this screen. Yes, I am. Good, good. I'm not totally in, totally, uh, up on zoom here. <laughs> I have another conference service. I don't have to like make sure I'm resharing things. So here is, here's where they are uh, conjunct. So of course, if you have anything near 22 degrees, excuse me, <clears throat> if you have anything near 22 degrees, you've been feeling this all year anyways, because it's just been between 22 and 24 degrees of Capricorn or any sign has just been really pumped and impacted consistently and regularly throughout the year. So look at where Jupiter and Pluto are for you. They're at 22 degrees of Capricorn. This is not your chart. This is the chart of this moment at my latitude and longitude. It will look different placements where you live. So how are you going to use this? I mean, in, in what way? What do you have to grow? What do you want to build? What do you want to show the world? What do you want to share the world? Again, this creates massive amounts of motivation. It's fantastic for that, right? And so you can accomplish a lot. Now, if you want to see where this is in your own chart, there I am. This is my profession. So you're welcome to come and book yourself a session. Um, because you're going to want to know what house it's in. For example, if it's in your ninth house, it is for me. This is just about educating and sharing the truth, my truth, um, as I've been doing all along anyways. But it helps that to grow even more. So you guys help me out with that comment, like, share, put this on your social media if you like it enough and join me on my Patreon group because this is what I do. I love to share what I love. I'm so passionate about this and I want to share that with you. All right, moving on to the next thing. And the next thing that I wanted to talk about is Mars is direct on the 13th. Of course, Friday the 13th, like I said, every cliche is coming down the pike at us in 2020. It's just outstanding. <laughs> and overwhelming. Oh my gosh. So what happens here? All week, we're feeling serious amounts of frustration and very uncomfortable energies. A lot of anxiety is coming up. I mean, 
just this week, I was just actually last night, I was, it was dark. It was only 5.30, but it was dark here. And my sister and I were coming back from a place we went to in Maine. And uh, oh my God, this car behind me, I, I, I drive fast. I'm not a, I'm not a slow poke. And um, oh my God, he was honking and honking and tailgating and flashing his lights. And this is a tiny little two lane road, right? In the middle of nowhere in the farmlands of Elliott, Maine. And oh my God, I finally pulled over and he was just like speeding by us and just, I say he, but I don't know. That's just a, a generic pronoun out of my mouth, okay? Um, this person was just so aggressive and they finally got past us and my heart was in my freaking throat. I thought, it made me scared. I didn't do anything. <laughs> it was like, wow, this Mars, holy cow. So it's coming at you whether, you, whether you want it to or not. But we have an opportunity to work through it. Why was I fearful? I mean, that scared me. I mean, I didn't ask for that, but it happened. So I'm going to address it. It was only last night. So I haven't really totally like gotten into, you know, why is this feel so uncomfortable to me? You know, people tailgate all the time, but I guess I'm just nervous. So I have to address my nervousness in the world because I've just seen some ugly stuff recently and um, it's making me nervous. So what is it doing for you? How are we going to feel? The world is going to feel very frustrated right now. This is going to have some impact in the world around us. And if you need to unplug it and just stay safe and take care of yourself, <sighs> like more breathing, that's what you need to do. So please do that for yourself. That's some of the most important things that we can do. Now, we also have the moon in Scorpio now. It moved into Scorpio a few hours before uh, Mars went stationary. And here it is. You can see it right down here. Right now, by, by the time we get to this time of day, it's, it's in um, five degrees of Scorpio. But this lunar phase, moon in Scorpio, in the lunar phase of balsamic, it is not new yet. It is not new until the moon and the sun are together. We'll talk about that in a sec. So we're in the balsamic lunar phase. Basically, I'll keep looking down. Let me grab my book. All of, you know, from 11 a.m. Eastern time all the way until the new moon um, on November 15th Eastern time at midnight. The moon is Scorpio and balsamic. That means you have, we as individuals have an opportunity to dig in deep and to what is bothering us. Like I've said in the beginning, this is a very Scorpio week. And we have almost two full days of the moon in Scorpio, but in that lunar phase of releasing, letting go, distilling information, surrendering to what is, removing and working through old karma, things that are very karmic. So if you have any opportunity, again, to do some shamanic healing or really deep psychological work with your therapist, Friday, I know Saturday's not always an office day, but Friday and Saturday are fantastic days to move through this. And if you're feeling the muck and the yuck of it, just know when we get to the new moon, it will, it will feel lighter and a little bit different. But in the meantime, do a lot of, you know, if you, love, if you do rituals and again, meditations, all of the things, I don't have to repeat myself here, but that's important for you to process what is coming up. This is very healthy for us. Again, don't look at the news if you are overwhelmed with what's already in your energy field, okay? So work on that. Now, huh, jeepers, I know... I told you this week was, it's a not, it's a not easy. It just isn't, but I'm giving you clear and concise ways to use this energy. So you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be scared. You can work through these things. And again, if you read the forecast, it's all written out, not verbatim because I write and then now I just ab lib. I just go with it with whatever, you know, I see here and whatever spirit brings through because there's good. So there is always different information in the written forecast than there is in here. There's the same, but then there's different too. All right, let's get to the new moon. I will go in depth with my Patreon group on the, with the new moon on Wednesday night. So if you're part of that, again, the link is below here. If you're on YouTube, you can find that Patreon link there. So, but what does it mean? I'm still going to tell you about it, but we're going to go more in depth in Patreon. So the new moon on the West Coast Pacific time is Saturday, the 14th, 9.07 p.m. And on the Eastern time zone in the United States, it is 
12.07 a.m. and a GMT, I believe it is 5.07 a.m. on Sunday the 15th. So the new moon's at 23 degrees of Scorpio. Find that in your chart because this is where you're going to set new goals, right? You're going to start now that you've gone through all the things you've gone through, all of Friday and Saturday. Now is an opportunity that you have a clean slate and you're able to start setting goals and create rituals and intentions towards Scorpio content. And of course, the content of whatever house it's in for you. So I've already told you all of those words that Scorpio is. You can go back to the beginning or read this, but briefly, it's, it's about where you want change to happen, where you want that deep-rooted healing to occur. And one of the things I haven't talked about, actually, it's, it's, it's money. It's your finances. It's not the money you earn, but it's the money, say, your spouse earns or your partner earns that is cooperative money, that it's, it's money that you use together, right? It's inheritances. It's, of course, taxes. And so, and it's the process of how we handle death. Not necessarily our own demise, but if it stirs up our fear of that, then it is that too. So how do you want to set, I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot right there. How can you set or what kind of, um, intentions can you set? You have to look at your own life and decide what of those things is important for you and then start writing that out. New moon intentions. Each new moon starts a, a monthly cycle, of course, but each new moon also starts a three-year cycle. That's called the lunar phase family. I'll go into that in depth in the Patreon group, but you have an opportunity here to set some intentions over the next couple of days so try and do it within the first 48 hours, but you can honestly set intentions as the moon is waxing, no matter what. But since it's Scorpio and that's about the deep darkness and internalized emotion, you know, it really is a wonderful way to set intentions towards psychological healing, healing wounds from childhood, and then really being able to move forward with that. So you're able to create and release what no longer serves you so you can and surrender to that, right? And when you surrender and through understanding, then you're able to develop and grow in a whole new direction. So this is the beauty and the wonder of what that new moon in Scorpio is. Thank you so much. Please give me a bump. I got this Jupiter Pluto stuff in my ninth house, so right at the midheaven. And so it's up to you to help me get more attention. <laughs> Thank you guys. That was not a not so humble push. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love you guys. Thank you um, so much. And um, if you do join Patreon, I mean, you guys, you can interact, you can ask questions and I would love to have you there. So thank you very much. And I'm going to turn off the recording now. Blessings. Namaste.